hopefully we are live yes okay so if you're watching this um, you will be either on the memory matters page or you will be in our CST facilitators club page now if you are dying to know what happens in a CST session and you would really like to run CST sessions and you want to know more about it then do head over to the CST Facilitators Club Facebook page um, and see us in there as well um, and in that group we do lots and lots of this stuff um, lots of ideas for sessions and today I'm going to be taking people through some ideas so we have um, many different topics or 14 to be precise CST topics that went through the original CST trials and today I'm going to be taking you through just a couple with some ideas of things that you can do in your sessions from the many years that we have been running um, sessions in in Cornwall um, so I'm going to be providing you with lots of ideas so hopefully with my fingers crossed we are also in the CST group as well so I'm going to wait for Shania to give me the thumbs up in the comments to let me know that we are streaming in the right places so just give me a second so I'm going to be okay I, uh, I can see I can see that we are streaming okay so let's start um, 14 sessions of the third in the CST topics. Now, if you're already running CST, you'll know all this like the back of your hand. If this is new to you and you want to know more about it, you can. Um, we have training. Thank you, Shania, for the thumbs up. That's awesome. We're in the right places. Um, so just very quickly, let's skip through all of those different sessions, physical games, Sounds, childhood, food, current affairs, faces and scenes, word association, being creative, categorizing objects, orientation, using money, number games, word games, and then the quiz. The quiz is not the normal type of quiz that we would usually have. The quiz is actually a really fun quiz where we uh, get people in the group to ask questions about the other people in the group and answer questions so things like who would you trust to cut your hair um if you had a dinner party who would you ask to bake the main or bake or to create the main dish um, this is a lovely way of your group getting to know each other and they should by that stage know each other well so let's have a look at a couple of the topics. So physical games uh, is probably, probably one of the easiest to come up with ideas in terms of what you could do. But we've had some really creative ideas over the years and tried very many different things. And you'll see from this, you know, everything from balloon bat using fly squatters, which you can pick up in um, most hardware stores <laughs> for uh, not very much money at all um, and this really gets the heart racing so we always kind of look at you know what's the reason for doing the session well the reason for doing the session apart from it being cognitively simulating the physical part is getting our hearts racing increasing blood flow to the brain so we do want to get people moving as much as possible as we can in the physical game session. Um, the gentleman on the right, he's skipping and um, it's not usually something that we would think of as a physical game session, more of a childhood session maybe to sort of look into skipping, but this gentleman thought he'd give it a go. Um, and actually we've had some great fun in sort of recreating the sorts of games that you would play as a child, like hopscotch has gone down very well. Um, and particularly when we get our beneficiaries to teach us, you know, teach us how to do it because we might not have done it before. Um, and that really helps in terms of increasing self-esteem in your group members. Um, 
the the bottom left hand uh picture is showing velcro ball darts <laughs> which again they're really cheap to pick up they're uh, garden games generally if you look at the garden games section of any home base or b&q um you'll be able to find these and what's great about it is there's a little bit of um simple mental maths as well here if you're going to keep score and then good old coits again another garden game but i've got more than this i've got more than this I've got air hockey, right? So this is a great one, which um, a wonderful member of staff who used to work with us, Christine, came up with. Um, if you have a local scrap store, use them because they have, this is how this came about. So she went to the scrap store and she found all of these ice cream lids. So when I'm talking ice cream lids, I'm talking like the American style um, cardboard round lids of a tub. And uh, she had loads of these, so she thought, what can we do? And created air hockey, so one big table, and you can either do it in teams or you can just do it for fun. Um, and you have one of the lids is the puck, so you might want to paint that one a different colour. And then everyone else holds a lid and uh, basically uses it just like you would with air hockey uh, to uh, scat the puck across the table. And of course you can create goals if you want to using post-it notes. This stuff is not expensive and is a lot of fun. So there's an idea you can have. I've got another one. So this is, I guess it's physical, charades. Um, we've all played charades at Christmas. You can't beat a little parlor game. Charades, when we do it in the groups we would uh, keep it really simple so you'd have your cards that you'd prepare earlier um so you might have for example one card might say fishing another one might say knitting uh diving bowling um anything really that that is a good action that someone can do that the others can guess so the whole okay it doesn't sound too physical but it is people have got to get up they've got to act out their part it's lots of fun so i'm going to put charades under physical games you'll see as we go forward <clears throat> that a lot of these overlap so charades you know does, is it a physical game it could be um so that, I mean, that's all I'm going to give you for now. That's I'm just going to give you a little teaser in terms of what you could possibly do. Sounds. So in this session, it's all to do with stimulating the recognition and categorization of sounds. So let your uh, brain go wild in terms of what we could do here. So yes, this gentleman is trying out a harmonica just having some instruments at hand to have a go at. What's amazing is the muscle memory that people hold in terms of things like playing the piano or even the guitar. You know, we, we've, we've had experience of people just knowing what to do. I had um, a child-sized violin that I took in once that someone just tucked under their chin. And although the sound wasn't amazing, what was really interesting was how they remembered how to do it. They'd had a few lessons at school and uh, all of that is really interesting to bring out, I think. And it's the only way to do it is through props and through people trying stuff. So just having a muck about with instruments is, is uh, a session in itself and a noisy one too. You might want to take some paracetamol. Um, another one is categorising sound. So I did do a session for a memory cafe where I had bathroom sounds and kitchen sounds, which I played and we all had to guess whether it was a bathroom sound or a kitchen sound. Uh, things like a, a boiling kettle, a bath that was running. I mean, these things, there's no right or wrong, is there? A bath could very much sound like a large sink in a kitchen. That's not the point. It's never the point about getting things right or wrong. It's more about stimulating the conversation that come about. Um, a really simple way to use sound is just to get everyone to close their eyes and just listen to what they can hear in the room and outside of the room and getting them to identify what those sounds are that they can hear. Again, no right or wrong. What does it sound like to you or what could it be? It's an easier one in the summer when you've got lawnmowers and birds and lots of outside noise. 
depending on where your group is if you're on a main busy road it can be um, interesting to sort of work out what vehicles are going past um, another session is using song and music we know that music is wonderful for connecting people um, if you were listening to my live earlier talking about the amygdala the part of the brain which is um, all to do with emotion and how emotional memory is is so evocative um, when we play music and so thinking about going through your Spotify playlist and just playing a little bit of a song and you know popular songs that people would have known in their youth and whether they can continue the song by singing it when you stop the music um, that can be really good fun we also have a sound bingo that we created just by using an iPad so basically what we did is um, there's lots of apps out there sound effects apps so find a good sound effects app usually it shows you the different like different pictures that go with the sounds and you press on the picture and it creates the noise what we did is we just kind of screenshotted the 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 pictures and then made a bingo card out of those and then people can cover up the pictures with small post-it notes so as they hear the noise that they think it matches with they can put a post-it note on it and it's just a fun way of kind of doing some categorization with a bit of bingo you could have a prize if you wanted to um, and then the last one that I'm going to talk about today is childhood um, childhood session and you probably heard me if you haven't heard me talk before um, and you might hear me talk again I bang on and on about the fact that when we do childhood sessions it's not just about reminiscing we're not just going over the same memories again and again not because that's not marvelous and wonderful it very much is because it's you know people's identity really that we're listening to but in terms of cognitive stimulation we want to create new connections we don't want to continue going over the same stuff again and again we want to create new thoughts new associations new ways of thinking and so in the childhood session although we may use reminiscence as the anchor we want to be thinking about conversations that we can have from there that create new connections in the brain so yes bring in all the old toys all those lovely whip and tops and the the spinning tops and you know these beautiful old toys that are so amazing to feel and to touch and to take you back to childhood but also bring in a box of new toys brand new things you know new ways of yeah, children play um, and compare them and have conversations about the old and the new how have things changed um, another session is you could use with the similarly with sweets so old sweets and new sweets there are some fantastic old sweet shops um, now where you can get things and lovely bags of uh, sweets in the stripy bags and then compare to sort of new sweets so look at the packaging what's changed over the years in terms of packaging you know what um you know you, you could have a whole conversation about the sugar tax couldn't you and how sweets taste differently so uh, so when you so, so the key point really with childhood is when you bring in props and you're looking at reminiscence make sure that you're bringing in new stuff as well so that you're comparing and you're contrasting so that you're creating those new uh, ways of thinking I've had fun with a marble run before so everyone loves marbles i think whenever you have anything that's tactile that people can feel and touch on the table it, it you won't go wrong tiddlywinks oh my goodness the hours we've spent playing tiddlywinks when that really wasn't the plan of the session at all but it doesn't matter does it it doesn't matter as long as we're creating those new connections in one session i bought in some stones some little stones and we played five stones so i just looked it up on the internet and then what is five stones and how do you play it because i've never played it before and uh, basically it's really difficult to do this behind the screen but i can't stop my screen share because it stops the whole live 
so you'll have to imagine but basically on the on your hand on the back of your hand you put five stones and then you flick your hand so that the stones go up in the air and then you turn your hand over to see how many you can catch and this is this is the whole childhood game that people used to play no toys required um just stones so yeah having a go at those things and, and allowing people to teach you those things too um another session that's a really popular one with facilitators is to get somebody to plan out a space that was really important to them in their life so it might be somewhere where really good memories are held and i think that's really important to say when we're working with reminiscence and childhood is to remember that not everybody had the most amazing childhood and so we have to be really careful that we're not stepping on difficult memories so creating a map if you like of a room that was really important to them like and having conversations with them about you know where if it was a kitchen for example so where was the kitchen window and where did the sink go and where was the um where was the door where was the kitchen table obviously don't ask the questions this quickly um and you can start to build a map so they may want to draw it or you you could draw it just from what they tell you it's great because it brings in spatial awareness as well so all of that is good isn't it but discussions around childhood just be careful not to ask really specific questions so how would you describe yourself as a child what a great question is that how would you describe yourself as a child um because it doesn't necessarily yes there's an element of memory that's required in there but also somebody could just say well if i was a child this is how i would describe myself another question might be what's the difference between how we discipline children in the past and how we discipline them now um and if you were a child now if you were a child now what would you do how would you spend the rest of your day it's a nice, lovely, imaginative question. So all of our questions are, are open questions which create good conversation with people with dementia. Now, I can see that I'm way over time. Um, and I just want to say, if you want to learn more about CSC and this is new to you, we do do CST training, which is all online nowadays. Um, so um, Shania will pop a link in the comments and you can book on to our CST training at any point because it's all recorded um, by me and uh, I take you through the whole process of what it is, how you deliver it and I know that you will get the bug if you haven't uh, come into contact with CST before you will get the bug. It's the most amazing thing in terms of um, fun uh, to, uh, to do and to, to, to be able to take to people with dementia in your community. We also um, we also have a workshop this week, which is coming up on Thursday at six o'clock. So if you haven't booked into our full one hour workshop, please do. I'd really love to see you there. Um, this week, I'm going to have to remind myself what it is, is how to hold people's attention in your group. So how to hold people's attention uh in your group so please do uh get booked in to the workshop and i'd love to see you there and there'll be a lot more sort of um interaction with you there as well than i can do on a facebook live and then finally you know maybe you've been running cst for a long long time and maybe you're a pro at cst and uh, you're enjoying getting lots of ideas from our cst facebook group and maybe just maybe you're thinking about what it would be like to create your own uh, organization or to create your own thing where you provide CST in your community for your community and we can help you do that so if you want any information about how we can help you just get in touch with either me or Shania you can see Shania um, beavering away putting the links in the comments at the moment so just click on us in Facebook send us a message and um, and we will tell you how we can help you to create your own thing where you get to work with people with dementia all day long in your community and um, providing CST. So if you're interested, please get in contact. Thank you. I really acknowledge you for being here today. I know you're all busy and thank you for all the work that you do to help people living with dementia to thrive. 
on that note, just one last thing that I want to mention is that we have a um, a campaign at the moment called Visible Valued and Heard. And if you haven't yet heard about Visible Valued Heard, please find out about it. What we're doing is we're collecting 6,000 stories. That's 6,000 stories. That's keeping us all awake at night, by the way. By March 2020. Three, I believe. Um, Shania will correct me if I'm wrong. But you can deliver your stories in any way, shape or form. So it might be that you work with someone who has the most amazing story. Please write it down, record it, um, video them if they're happy for to be videoed. Um, you may have a story about dementia. Send it to us. We need these stories because these stories are going to be used. We're going to be pulling out the themes in the stories and we're going to be lobbying Parliament to get a much better deal for people living with dementia. So tell everybody, tell everyone you're working with, tell all your friends, start collecting stories and send them in because we want people living with dementia to be visible, to be valued and to be heard finally, because it is not good enough how things are at the moment. So thank you very much for watching. I've gone on for far too long. Love you, love you, love you. See you in the group. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, bye, Leslie. Bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs>